Hey, it's Jamie from Gilbert Farm, and I'm going to answer your top 10 questions when it comes to canning. Anytime that I put out a canning video, I always get the same questions asked over and over and over again. And even though these questions are mostly addressed in our canning 101 video, it's a very long video, so I thought I would do a quick video to cover the top 10 questions that I always get on canning. So here we go. Number one, is canning safe? If you are following a USDA approved recipe, and if you store the jars in a safe manner, then canning is absolutely safe. Uh, there is a concern about botulism. In my personal opinion, having been canning for quite a while now, it's more hype than it is anything else. If you are canning uh, according to the USDA instructions for a recipe, you are going to have no issues with botulism or with food spoilage. So the website to go to to find a USDA approved uh, canning recipe is the National Center for Home Food Preservation. I'm gonna leave this in uh, the description down below if you guys want. You can bookmark that. It is my go-to for any kind of canning recipe. Anything that you want to can, you find it on there and it gives you the exact instructions for how to prepare it and for how to can it, whether it needs water bath or whether it needs pressure can and how long it needs to be canned for. If you follow those instructions, your recipe is almost guaranteed to be safe. Uh, and we're going to cover the exceptions a little bit later on in the, one of the next questions. Now also, anytime that I put out a video on canning, I almost 100% can guarantee I'm going to have somebody that says, Granny did it X, Y, Z way and we're still alive. Okay, I am all for road canning. If any of you guys have seen my canning butter recipe, you guys know that I do some things that are not USDA approved uh, and I am all for exploring other avenues. But for intro to canning videos, for those of you guys that are new to canning, I highly recommend that you stick with the National Center for Home Food Preservation website for canning recipes and uh, that will um, give you a better comfort level when it comes to canning. And then once you learn canning and you want to explore things beyond what the USDA recommends, then go for it by all means. But my recipes, when I try to put out a video and I say this is a USDA approved recipe or one that's on the National Center for Home Food Preservation, I try to stick with the rules. And the reason for that is to make you guys more comfortable when you are getting into canning. So the second question that I always get asked is, how do I know whether to water bath can a recipe or pressure can a recipe? This is really simple. Go to the National Center for Home Food Preservation website. Go to whatever it is that you're canning. And if there is an option there for water bath canning, then you can water bath can that recipe. If not, if you only see pressure can options there, then you must pressure can that recipe. Now, in particular, when it comes to water bath canning, you must follow the instructions exactly as they are presented. If you uh, add a little bit too much spices or something else to the recipe, if you adapt the recipe at all for water bath canning, it could make it unsafe. So just make sure you're following the instructions on the website and everything will be good. Now, just again, a side note, referring back to question number one, you're going to hear a lot of people that say they water bath can things that is not approved by the USDA. Uh, I would not recommend this for beginners. Stick with the rules, which is that website. And then once you get more comfortable canning, get more experienced, you know, by all means, do what you want. All right, so the third question that I always get asked is how do I know if my food is spoiled? Well, if you go to your pantry and you pull this off the shelf and this, this indentation is raised, it's not pushed in, or the lid easily comes off, then throw the entire thing out. There is a very high potential that um, there is botulism in there because air has gotten into the jar and botulism can be absorbed through the skin. So you're gonna wanna probably put on some gloves and take the entire jar and throw it in, the, put it in a trash bag and throw it in your trash can. Anything that's spilled, uh, you're gonna wanna clean up with a bleach solution as well. Now, some other indicators that there is spoilage is uh, if you open it up and it smells bad, uh, or if it's a different color than say anything else that you canned uh, that was similar, uh, or if you actually see mold growth uh, on the food itself, then you're gonna wanna throw that away as well. Don't eat that, that is spoiled. But for the most part, if it's sealed, uh, and you open it up, smells okay, looks okay, and you know that you canned it right to begin with, then you're good to go. I would go ahead and eat it. The fourth question that I always get asked is, how long does my canned food last? Uh, the USDA will put a one year expiration on all canned goods. Um, however, there are people that have eaten canned goods five, 10, 15 years beyond their canning date, as long as they remain sealed, and as long as they were kept in proper storage. 
Um, the only thing that you need to keep in mind if you are keeping something beyond one year is there is a five to 20% loss of nutrition uh, year over year whenever you are uh, storing something over a year. So there could be some loss of nutrition in the product, but other than that, as long as it's sealed, smells good, stored right, canned right, should be good to go for quite a long time. I know, I think the longest that I've eaten anything was uh, probably about two and a half years beyond the canning date. So the fifth question that I always get asked is about the nutrition of canned goods and whether or not there's a nutritional loss from the canning process itself. And I'm just going to tell you exactly what the USDA says when it comes to nutrition on canned goods. Uh, many vegetables begin losing some of their vitamins when harvested. Nearly half of the vitamins may be lost within a few days unless the fresh produce is cooled or preserved. Within one to two weeks, even refrigerated produce loses half or more of some of its vitamins. The heating process during canning destroys from one third to one half of vitamins A, C, thiamine, and riboflavin. Once canned, additional losses of these sensitive vitamins are from five to 20% each year. The amount of other vitamins, however, is only slightly lower in canned goods compared with fresh food. If vegetables are handled properly and canned promptly after harvest, they can be more nutritious than fresh produce sold in local stores. Now the sixth question that I always get asked is how to store canned goods. Canned goods ideally should be stored between 50 and 70 degrees. Any lower than that and you can start to get into freezing issues. When you start to get up around uh, 95 degrees, um, that's when the seals can become undone and you start to have food spoilage. Also, canned goods should be stored in a dark area. If you don't have a basement or a cupboard to keep them in, then you can also cover them with some sort of cloth but they should be stored in a dark area and this is to prevent vitamin loss from the sun or from light. The other part of this is I always store my jars without the rings on. I get this question a lot. The reason for this is because uh, leaving the rings on can create a false seal. Here's just an empty jar with a lid. You can see it's indented but this is not sealed. If I were to pull this off my shelf and look at this I would think that this was a sealed jar but it's actually not. Look. I can take this ring off and it looks that it's like it's sealed, but it's it's not sealed. That is the reason why I store my jars without rings on, to, pr to prevent uh, me from accidentally ingesting something that could potentially be spoiled. The other part of that question is I always store my jars on a single shelf, and the reason for that is if you were to stack them, uh, the weight from these jars could actually break the seal by lifting up on the edges. Number seven, does canned food have a different kind of texture? Is it soggy or is it bland? Okay, to clear some things up, canned food is going to be different than anything you cook fresh. So when we're talking about something like ground beef, if you were to get fresh ground beef and cook it up in a pan, it's going to be crisp. But this has been soaking in liquid. So this is going to have a softer texture to it. I have a lot of people that ask me about canned chicken in particular. They say it has the texture of tuna. It does. It has a softer texture than if you were to say throw it in the crock pot or if you were to grill it. It's a different kind of texture. When you're talking about something like canned green beans, um, home canned green beans in my opinion are very similar to what you would get at the grocery store um, in, in say a regular commercial cannery. They kind of have like that soft texture to them. I am not a fan of canned, home canned vegetables or canned vegetables in general at all. I prefer fresh. However, these are really handy when throwing into any kind of soups or stews. If I don't have the freezer space to keep it, then I will have a canned uh, item that I can throw into my soups or stews or whatever, and that is the main reason in keeping these. A lot of people ask me about my canning soup recipe and why did I use uh, canned potatoes. You can use raw potatoes when making your soup. That's perfectly fine. I just so happen to have a whole bunch of uh, canned potatoes. That's why I use them in my soup. Um, and they asked me if these completely fell apart. Uh, and as you can see, they didn't. Um, these are the canned, the twice canned potatoes that I used in the soup and uh, they are just fine. However, there is going to be a texture difference between what you are canning and what you are making fresh. It is going to be a little bit softer. As far as taste, um, the taste is actually, in my opinion, when it comes to soups, more improved. If you've ever made a soup and you put it in the refrigerator and the next day it tastes better, in my opinion, that's how soups taste when they are canned. They have a better flavor. And a lot of people ask me, can I add spices to anything that I'm canning? Um, anything that you are pressure canning, you can add whatever spices you want. Just note that there are some spices, such as sage, which can kind of give an off flavor when canning. 
Uh, you just might want to keep that in mind, but in general, yes, you can use any spices you want when pressure canning. When water bath canning, you have to follow the recipes. Question number eight is whether or not you can use a pressure canner on a glass cooktop. I have been successfully using my pressure canner on my glass cooktop for over two years now and have had no issues whatsoever. I know a lot of other people that have used their pressure canner on glass cooktops with no issues. And then there have been people that have had the glass crack. Uh, the main issue when it comes to uh, whether or not you can use it on a glass cooktop is the type of canner you're using. Some of the canners have an indented bottom uh, on the bottom of the canner and this is what kind of traps heat and it's causing a lot of issues with the glass cracking. Another issue that can come up with glass cooktops is your burner should be no more than four inches smaller than the diameter of your pot. This particular uh, range that I have has a small burner on the inside and a larger burner on the outside so it does meet that criteria. If you guys are concerned about using a pressure canner on a cooktop, call your manufacturer. If they advise against it, we are actually going to have some alternatives for you guys coming up in some future videos uh, for uh, canning when you can't use your glass cooktop, so look for that video coming up. Question number nine is whether or not you can use a pressure cooker to can with. There is a difference between a pressure cooker and a pressure canner. Uh, the All-American just so happens to be a pressure cooker and canner in one. But in order to be qualified as a pressure canner, uh, the USDA stipulates that it must hold at least four quart jars upright with the lid on, that it must have a way of venting when it's pressurized. So uh, to vent 10 minutes before and 10 minutes after to build up that pressure, you must be able to vent. A lot of pressure cookers can't do that. And uh, it must have some way of indicating that it's at the proper pressure and that it's maintaining that pressure throughout the cooking time. And again, that's something else that a lot of pressure cookers can't do. Uh, in addition to that, a lot of pressure cookers are uh, made with less metal, which means they can be more dangerous. Uh, they are also smaller in diameter and also uh, usually takes pressure cookers a lot longer to come up to pressure. So uh, you may end up with under-processed food and that could end up um, potentially causing uh, some issues such as food spoilage or botulism. So no, the answer is you cannot use a pressure cooker to can in just to be safe. So as far as ingredients and using them in food, you can use them in casseroles, you can use them in uh, omelets, making frittatas, uh, you can use them in sandwiches. So if you have canned ham, take that ham out and make a hot ham sandwich or your roast beef, make a roast beef sandwich or chicken, make a chicken sandwich. Uh, you can use them in soups and stews. You've seen me add my cooked potatoes to soups and stews before. Uh, you can use them on top of salads, such as your shredded chicken, put it on top of salad, or you can use it as a salad. So you can make chicken salad or ham salad out of it, or potato salad uh, out of your canned potatoes. Um, and you can also use it as a topping, say on baked potatoes. So I've made barbecue chicken before, can that up. All I do is open that up, pour it on top of some baked potatoes, amazing meal, super quick. Um, and also as a side dish. So if you have uh, canned carrots, you can make honey carrots with those. Or again, like I said, with my potatoes, you can make mashed potatoes, super quick meals to whip up. So there you go, guys. Those are my top 10 canning questions answered. I hope that's been helpful to you guys. If I had to add a number 11 on there, it would be that canning has been hands down the best and most important skill that I have learned to date. Uh, it has saved me a ton of money by being able to buy items in bulk and from not having to store them in the freezer. Uh, in addition, it's uh, saved me a lot of money from not having to go out and buy very expensive pre-packaged items because I'm able to can things such as soup uh, that I'm able to just pull out of my basement and whip up in literally five minutes or less by just heating it up. And in addition, it has been super healthy because rather than again buying those pre-packaged items or quick meals from the grocery store or from a restaurant, uh, I control what ingredients go in my food. Uh, a lot of people are concerned about the startup costs of having to buy something like a pressure canner. I, I have made that back within the first three months of having this canner. So there you go guys. I hope that's again been helpful. If you guys have any of your own uh, tips or tricks on canning, uh, leave them down below. And if you guys um, need me to clarify any more, feel free to leave those questions. I'll try and get to them as best I can. If you guys like this kind of stuff, we have a lot more videos coming up, including an alternative to this glass cooktop. So again, stay tuned, more videos coming up. Thanks for watching.